help us build an Islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org. Link in the description. The Prophet ﷺ says, When the first night of Ramadan enters upon you, Sufidatul Shayateen wa Maradatul Jinn. The first thing that Allah does is He removes the influences, He removes the major devils. The, the, the most aggressive of the jinn away from you and puts them in chains. So you're on this path now and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala restrains those shayateen from being able to influence you the way that they would be able to influence you throughout the year. What does that mean? Allah has given you power over the shayateen throughout the entire year. Inna ibadi laysa laka alayhim Allah says in the Qur'an, you have no control or authority over my servants except for those who follow you willingly. And the call of the shaytan is, وَلَا تَجِدُ أَكْثَرَهُمْ shakirin. You will find that most of them will not be grateful people. So you have the power to put your shaytans in chains throughout the entire year, figuratively, by not obeying them, and by reducing them, and by sustaining yourself with the gratitude of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the one who recognizes the blessings of Allah upon him, will not find in himself the indecency to sin knowingly and consistently, majorly or minorly. You won't find that indecency within yourself because you know the, gratitude, you know the blessings of Allah upon you and you're, gra you're grateful to him for them. But in Ramadan, Allah pulls them further back. And Allah makes you more aware of your blessings. So while Allah feeds you with shukr, with gratitude throughout the day, through just the very act of fasting, which should increase that gratitude, Allah also reduces the influence of the shayateen, so they become weaker than they already are. They were already weak, but now they're weaker. Now they're really reduced. So if you think about this, Jannah is there, it should be, count, it should be, very, uh, it should be common sense that if there is paradise and I need to get to paradise, then no influence should get in the way. But the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that essentially what keeps us away from Jannah is not a lack of good deeds. It's our inability to get out of our own way and our following another path. Allah has already placed us on that path to get back home. We just have to make sure that we don't take a detour and get away from that path. So the very first thing the Prophet ﷺ mentions here is that the shayateen are restrained. You have no excuses now. You can't blame the influences. The influences have been reduced in ways that they will not be reduced throughout the entire year. It starts with that. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, وَغُلِّقَتْ أَبْوَابُ النَّارِ فَلَمْ يُفْتَحْ مِنْهَا بَابٌ This is beautiful. The gates of hellfire are closed and not a single one of their doors will be opened. Not just غُلِّقَتْ أَبْوَابُ النَّارِ the gates of hellfire are closed and not a single one of its doors will be opened. You don't need to be tempted. And if you just think about this, by the way, the sins that we struggle with and the bad habits that we struggle with in Ramadan are leftovers from that which comes before Ramadan. You're not going to be more tempted by sin and disobedience in Ramadan than you are outside of Ramadan. What I mean by that is that your urges to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not increase inside of Ramadan. That's not going to happen. Most people don't suddenly take up a new sin in Ramadan. <laughs> right? You don't start doing something that you weren't doing before in Ramadan in terms of sin. That's very unusual and unlikely. Instead, you have a hard time kicking the previous habits. So no new door of hellfire will be opened. The doors will not be opened for you to sin. You just need to properly let go of the old ones and make strides and make way in Ramadan. And the greatest accomplishment in Ramadan that you can possibly have beyond the recitation of the Qur'an, beyond the amount of prayer that you do, is to kick those bad habits. And that should be the greatest metric that you have in Ramadan. The number one thing you need to ask yourself is how much distance have I put between myself and those sins that were holding me back? That is going to be the standard for success because as Umar ibn Abdul Aziz rahimahullah said, taqwa is not fasting long days and praying long into the night. 
Taqwa is tarq al-ma'asi, is abandoning the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, abandoning the bad habits. Everything beyond that is excellence, is ihsan. So this is where you start and this is your standard of success. How distant can I make myself from those sins that have had power over me because the influence they have over me now and the one who tempts me with those influences are, more, are, are weaker now than they ever will be. So if there is ever a time to completely remove those shackles, it's now. It's now. Because they're weaker now than they ever will be. And should I do that, then I can properly take my next step on that journey. Now I can run. I'm not burdened. Again, think of that person that is walking on that path, uphill, thorny bushes, and then they get to a part of their journey. It's flat land, no thorny bushes. You can run as fast as you can. But if you've got a hundred pounds on your back, you're not moving. Or you're going to move very slow. You have to remove that burden and start making your way. And that's when the Prophet ﷺ said, وَفُتِّحَتْ أَبْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ فَلَمْ يُغْلَقْ مِنْهَا ذَابٌ the gates of paradise are opened and not a single gate of paradise is closed to you. Not one gate of paradise will be closed to you. What does that mean? There's a particular gate of Jannah for those who fast and who excel in their fasting and it's called Bab al -Rayyan. It's a very special gate of paradise that, that is reserved for the fasting and for those who excel in their fasting. Bab al -Rayyan. But the Prophet ﷺ is saying that when Ramadan comes around, all of those gates start calling you. The gate of prayer, the gate of charity, the gate of generosity, the gate of good behavior, the gate of silatul rahim, of establishing good ties with you and your family members. All of these gates are open to you. What that means is that in these seasons of mercy. Al-Hafid ibn Rajab rahimahullah comments on this very beautifully. In Ramadan, the usual good deeds that you would do are rewarded unusually. <laughs> Alright, so the usual good that you were doing anyway are rewarded unusually. As the narration of Imam al-Zuhri rahimahullah, a tasbih, a subhanallah in Ramadan is worth a thousand times than it is outside of the month of Ramadan. So your usual good deeds are rewarded unusually, but then you have an unusual capacity to do good deeds as well. It's twofold. You're able to do good deeds that you would not be able to do throughout the entire year. Allah opens up those doors for you, opens up those influences for you. You're able to pray more in this month than you can pray throughout the entire year. You're able to read more than you can read throughout the entire year. You're able to make, uh, to make more dua, to supplicate more than you're able to make throughout the entire year. So the idea is now, just as the only, the only bad habits that I'm suffering from in Ramadan are the waning, weakening bad habits that I have to relinquish permanently as I get into this month. But then what I need to do is salvage the good that I had because it's easier to do them and more rewardable to do them and then take on new habits that it's going, that's going to propel me once I get past this smooth patch if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees me through it. So I have to ask myself if the usual good deeds that I was doing, if I'm maintaining them and putting more quality in them, and then the unusual quantity of good deeds that I'm doing now, if there is anything of it that I can plan to take with me for the journey beyond. Because that's really what Ramadan is about. The influences have been set. The stage has been set. And essentially what the Prophet ﷺ mentions next in this hadith is that Allah will give you the perfect storm of mercy. Ramadan is a perfect storm of mercy. Forgiveness of sins, removing the bad influences, removing the shayateen that promote those bad influences, not the human shayateen, they're still around in full force, but at least the jinn shayateen, maradatul jinn, restraining them, restraining the influences, opening up the doors for good deeds, rewarding your usual good deeds unusually, and then exposing you to an unusual quantity of good deeds. But at the end of the day, even with that perfect storm, you have to move and you have to run. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
will not run for you. And that's an important concept. If it wasn't important, the Prophet ﷺ would not mention it in the way that he does. At that point, as you're on this path and you're able to move now and run at a pace that you're not able to run before, Yunadi munadin ya baghi al khair aqbil. At that point, a caller calls out to you and says, O oh, seeker of good, come forth. Come forth. My beloved brothers and sisters, on the first night of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chains all the shayateen, all the devils, and then He closes all the doors of Jahannam, the doors of hellfire, and then He opens all the doors of Jannah. All the gates of heaven are opened in the month of Ramadan. So it is very easy for you to stop sin in this month of Ramadan. It is very easy for you to do good deeds in this month of Ramadan. It is very easy for you to strengthen your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this month of Ramadan. Leave all of your bad habits, leave all of your sins and turn towards Allah and ask Allah for forgiveness in this month. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful. He will forgive each and every one if you just ask him for forgiveness. If you repent to him, if you come towards him. No matter how many sins in the past you have done, no matter how many years you didn't obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just come close to Allah in this month of Ramadan and He will embrace you, He will forgive you, He will make you a better human being. When you turn towards Allah, when you fast, when you recite the Quran, when you give charity, when you do good deeds and when you repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the doors of opportunities for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives you. Allah makes things easy for you. Allah brings you out from every problem. Allah gives solution in your life. So turn towards Allah in this month of Ramadan. This is the month we should do transaction with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything you do in this month of Ramadan, every good deed you do in this month of Ramadan, Allah multiplies it into many folds. Every subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. You recite in this month of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will multiply it into many folds and recite the Quran because this is the month of the Quran. Ramadan is when the Quran is revealed and in this month of Ramadan we have Laylatul Qadr, the powerful night, the night which is better than thousand months. So especially the last ten nights of Ramadan focus into them and work hard so that you can catch Laylatul Qadr and you can worship during that night and you gain the reward of worshipping thousand months subhanallah and may Allah forgive our shortcomings may Allah give us the ability to catch Laylatul Qadr may Allah give us the ability to fast the whole month of Ramadan and may Allah make us obedient towards him and may Allah Give us the ability to do good deeds and may Allah grant us Jannatul Firdaus Al A'la. Help us build an Islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org. Link in the description.